we'll sketch the graph of p of x which is equal to minus 2 times log to the base 2 of x minus 1 plus 3. Now at this stage I'm going to take my time to summarize all the concepts and uh, go a bit slow, right? So let us first list all the transformations which we should be considering to sketch the graph of the given function, right? So each and everything here is related to transformations, right? So let's see how they are related. That negative is what? It is reflection on vertical reflection on x-axis, correct? This is first part. How about this 2? Two? 2 is vertical stretch. So it is vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Now negative and then 1. This 1 means what? Horizontal translation. By how much? Just one unit. Which direction? Horizontal translation. One unit. Right. Correct. And three is vertical translation. Three units up. So combining all this, we get our transformed function. Now let us also look into the key points, right? So let's make our key points now. So whenever we are saying key points, it is with respect to the base function, which is log 2, log to the base 2 of x, correct? Okay. So let's, let me make a table here so that we can clearly list our points. Let me make a horizontal kind of a table this time, since we have less space. Okay. So, so let's say we'll write down log to the base 2 of x and then we'll write this function which is minus 2 log to the base 2 of x minus 1 plus 3. Okay. So if we have a point in general which is x, y, how is that going to get transformed? As far as the x value is concerned, we are only adding 1 to it so it becomes x plus 1. Correct? As far as the y value is concerned, we are multiplying by minus 2 and then adding 3. So we get minus 2 times the y value plus 3. So that is the basic transformation. Do you see the transformation formula here? That is how we are going to transform. So uh, now let's look into uh, the features. Okay, now one of the key features is the end behavior. So when I say uh, x is approaching uh, for logarithmic function 0 from the positive side y basically approaches negative infinity. Now as far as the x value is concerned we have to add 1. Do you see that addition of 1 how it plays a role? So now we are saying when x approaches 1 from positive side y approaches what? Negative of this value right? So so negative two times that means positive infinity right so this time positive infinity do you see that major change it's a huge change now right so so let me just uh, sketch this for you and uh, then we'll try to understand what is really happening correct so earlier we had a logarithmic function which was shown like this so this is your log to the base 2 of x, perfect, the original function, on which we had been considering three points, right? Let these be the three points. And that was our end behavior. Is that clear to five key points? Now we are focusing on this point. See what is happening. When I say minus, this point actually shoots up. That is minus, right? So, so that minus makes it shooting it up, but then you are moving it by one unit to the right. That means the vertical asymptote has shifted from the y-axis to a position which is one unit to the right, which is practically here. Do you see that? So it moves here. So this is the value which is now 
equal to x equals to 1. So your graph is on the right side of this red line and that is your vertical asymptote. Does it make sense to you? So this one actually shifts all these points by one unit to this side. Does it make sense to you? Okay. Now, so combination of these two, as far as the value infinity goes, means that you are now approaching here. Does it make sense to you? That is the first criteria. Now let's look into the points as such. So this point here was at half, the value was minus 1. Now to half, I am going to add 1 plus 1. That means 3 by 2, right? 3 by 2 is 1 plus half. The y value gets multiplied by minus 2. So that this becomes plus 2 plus 3 makes it 5. Does it make sense to you? So this particular point moves from here to... Let me break the scale here since, you know, they are going to be bigger numbers. So 1.5, that is, right? This was 2 for us. So somewhere here, it has shot up to a very high value, right? So let's say this point here is now 1.5 or 3 over 2, 5. Is, does it make sense to you, right? So that's your point number 2. Perfect. Now, let's look into the third point here which is so we have considered these are the relations right now we'll see the next point here the next point for us is is this point right now let's we are focusing on this which is add one the value is zero so if i multiply uh, i mean one we have to add one so let's make it two and if i multiply anything to zero it remains zero how we are translating three units up, so it changes to three units up. Does it make sense to you? So this particular point now moves from one zero to two three, right? So so now it is at two earlier this point. So somewhere here, right? So two three. So here we have a point which is two three. Perfect. That's your next point. Now the third point which is a key value for us is at 2 the value was 1 in the original function. So 2 I'm going to add 1 to it it becomes 3 to 1 I'll multiply by negative 2 it becomes negative 2 plus 3 will give me positive 1 correct. So the third point moves to a position which is 3 units away but 1 up right so 1 up. So you see how we are getting this graph, correct? So this graph here is kind of like this. Does it make sense? So that is the graph of our function p of x. Does, does it make sense to you? So you can see that when x is approaching infinity, y was earlier approaching positive infinity but now when x is approaching infinity y approaches negative infinity so that becomes the end behavior perfect so that is how we'll get the graph of our transform function now does it make sense so the major change here is that the domain has changed the domain of this function now is what Domain is x belongs to real numbers where x is greater than 1. Well, range is all real numbers, right? y belongs to real numbers. That's okay. But the domain has changed. Even the end behavior has changed. Instead of approaching negative infinity on the vertical asymptote, it approaches positive infinity. But when x approaches infinity, it approaches negative infinity right so that is how we get our transformations done so i hope that helps you to understand the complete concept of sketching logarithmic functions right feel free to write your comment share your views and if you like and subscribe to my videos that'd be great so we began with uh, understanding of logarithmic functions we first sketched it with the help of reflecting exponential function on y equals to x and then did all the transformation after applying the rules. So what you also learned here is rules of logs, right? Hope that helps. Feel free to write your comment, share your views and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks 
for your time and all the best.